Welcome everybody. My name is Tim Sandy and I'm a VMware Systems Engineer and Technical Partner Manager. In this session, I'm going to provide you a sales and technical overview of VMware's Virtual Network Assessment. And we call it the VNA for short. Now, the Virtual Network Assessment is using our vRealize Network Insight solution to use to scan your network and it's meant to be a pre-sales tool just like the rest of our assessments. In this case, it is a pre-sales tool for the vRealize Network Insight solution as well as NSX and it helps plan and we'll talk a little bit more about this. So the first half of it is going to be more of a sales overview for our VMware partners that use this assessment and then the second half of it is going to be a little more technical in a way, I'm going to be showing you basically the process of installing and configuring some of the requirements for it. I'm going to be using the screen captures from the interface rather than going into an actual environment. I'm just going to be providing a the first half of sales and the second half more a little more technical for the install configuration and requirements. So let's get started. So what is the virtual network assessment or the VNA? The VNA is similar to other assessments, again, such as our hybrid cloud assessment, our vSphere optimization assessment, and our vSAN assessment. The pre-sales tool demonstrates the value of NSX by analyzing the traffic patterns inside your data center. The tool produces a report that summarizes insights on security risks, the amount of east-to-west traffic within your data center, as well as provide a preview of actionable micro-segmentation recommendations, such as firewall rules. It takes the guesswork out of deploying microsegmentation with a comprehensive security model and firewall rules. You can install it in about 30 minutes. You can run it for one to three days and quickly demonstrate the value of NSX by understanding data center traffic profiles, such as east to west traffic or north to south traffic. Identify security gaps and network optimization opportunities, as well as also quantify the benefits of using NSX. Now we do recommend that you use the assessment for up to seven days so that you get additional detailed information for the assessment that way you know the information is a little more detailed a little more accurate but in little as three days you can get yourself detailed enough information to really truly provide a good analysis and report for the end customer. Again, like our other assessments, you can get all the information that you need to learn about it on the Virtual Network Assessment Partner Central page at the link that you see at the bottom of the slide here. It contains all the information that you need on the assessment, such as links to the network competencies, such as the VSP and the VTSP for network virtualization, and the associated sales and technical badges for the VNA to provide you for conducting one as well. Also has links to the hands-on labs so that you can learn how to use vRealize Network Insight, activation keys, email templates, data sheets, install guides, sample reports, as well as training videos. So again, the Network Virtualization Assessment Partner Central page has all that information just like all of our other assessments do. So the Virtual Network Assessment, or the VNA, uses VMware's vRealize Network Insight or vRNI solution. So you may ask, what is it and what does it do? So vRNI delivers intelligent operations for software-defined networking and security. It helps optimize network performance and availability with converged visibility across virtual and physical networks, provides planning and recommendations for implementing microsegmentation based security, and provides operational views to quickly and confidently manage and scale a VMware NSX deployment. The key benefits of the VRNI is that it provides east to west traffic analysis for security and microsegmentation design, control and tracking to meet audit and compliance requirements for virtual distributed firewalls, a 360 overlay and underlay visibility and topology mapping, extensive third party physical switch integrations, VXLAN and VLAN logical path mappings, advanced NSX operations management and natural language search and enhanced user experience for rapid troubleshooting. vRealize Network Insight, or vRNI, has several use cases associated to it. The most popular use case that we're seeing is planning microsegmentation deployments to ensure compliance within an environment. It provides recommendations to make microsegmentation easier to deploy. It continuously monitors and audits compliance posture over time 
It optimizes network performance with a 360 degree visibility of your virtual and physical network topology mapping. Out of the box integrations with the leading physical switch vendors. It also provides performance optimization across overlay and underlay networks. It ensures the health and availability of NSX deployments, intuitive user interface, and provides a natural language, almost like a Google-like search to quickly pinpoint issues. And finally, it does best practice compliance checking to ensure continuous compliance. So you may ask, what is the benefit in it for our partners to run this assessment or any of our others for that matter? So partners will get 5,000 reward points upon closing a deal on vRealize Network Insight after doing the virtual network assessment, which goes towards both the AEC that were involved with the assessment. You also have the potential to charge a professional service fee to complete the assessment, which is a high margin profit for doing service delivery. It's a quick way to show results to a customer using the report from the assessment to help close the deal. The report demonstrates the value of microsegmentation to your customers as well. It also provides a 360 degree visibility to their virtual and physical networks, which they probably didn't have before. And finally, it increases your value as a trusted advisor. For partners to conduct the virtual network assessment, there are some requirements though that the partner must meet. So you need to make sure that you do meet these requirements. The partner needs to have their network virtualization competency. The engineer performing the install and the assessment must have one of the following certifications. Either their VCP NV, which is a minimum requirement, or any higher level network virtualization certification such as the VCIX NV certification or the VCDX NV certification. Now, by the way, when we were talking about the partner having their network virtualization competency, that means that at least two people have to have the VSP NV and the VTSP NV. Now, both of those are free and online. The VSPs are about two hours worth of uh, online work. The VTSPs are a little more technical and they're usually about six hours worth of work. So you have to have two people that have both their VSPs and VTSPs. And that will get them their network virtualization competency. And then they also have to have their engineer, whoever's actually performing these assessments, they will have to have either the VCP, VCIX, or VCDX uh, certification as well. The partner must also complete the how to sell VRNI training. They will need to register the deal in Salesforce Ad Plus with the NSX opportunity amount listed. They're going to fill in the selling activities with the drop down equals assessment NSX, as you see on the image there. So this is the recommended timeline for the virtual network assessment. So for day, for day one, we're going to make sure to get confirmation from our customer that they still want you to do the assessment, obviously. Don't forget to register the assessment to get credit for it. Be sure to obtain and review with the customer the VRNI requirements that are in the VRNI assessment requirements checklist, and that's more on the technical side. Then the engineer is going to install the platform virtual appliance, and then they're going to install the proxy virtual appliance, so two virtual appliances. Then they're going to add the data source, such as the vCenter server, to pull data from or any other additional resources required. They're going to verify the install is successful for both the appliances and the data being collected from the vCenter server is as it should be to confirm that everything is working properly. For day two, again, I recommend to be sure to verify that the data is still being collected. Then generate an initial sample report to review the data is being collected and that it's being reported on properly. Review the sample report. And then what I would also do is go ahead and review the vRealize Network Insight user interface with the customer so they can get a feel for what it looks like and what kind of information that can be obtained from the interface itself for the full-blown version. And then finally, either on day three or if you go a full seven days for the assessment, best practice again is to run the assessment no less than three days to ensure that you're getting good data and analysis information for the report. Uh, the recommended is to run for a full seven days uh, to get the best and most accurate information. On the last day of the assessment, again, verify data collection is still running. Generate the final assessment report to present to the customer. Take the time to go ahead and review that report and organize the information 
and go over what's going to be pertinent to bring up and show to the customer. Because maybe there's so much information that you may not need to show everything. You may just want to, you definitely want to hone in on what their business issues is, what they're looking for, be realized network insight to resolve or do for them and key in on those. Go through the final report with the customer and any other pertinent individuals that have a vested interest in the potential procurement of vRealize Network Insight. Show the customer the benefits of vRealize Network Insight related to the data analysis from their actual environment in the report. Close the deal and make the sale of vRealize Network Insight. If they're not purchasing the VRNI, then be sure to uninstall the appliances and wrap up the assessment. So for this portion of the presentation, I'm going to provide more of the technical overview of the installation and configuration of VRNI for the virtual network assessment. So before getting started with the assessment and installing the vRealize Network Insight appliances, the first thing you need to do is download and review the virtual network assessment requirements checklist. Again, that is on the Partner Central page, as you see there. Also. The customer needs to be running a minimum of ESXi or vSphere 5.5 update 2 or higher. Their vCenter server must be running also 5.5 update 2 or higher. They must be using virtual distributed switches and they must enable NetFlow on it. This requires modifying a couple of permissions on it. Also what would be handy is having the ability to SSH, HTTPS, and SNMP to any hardware firewalls, switches, and routers linked to the vSphere platform would be good to have. Note, the assessment can be done without the access to the physical devices, but the report won't be as detailed without that access. So, and finally, they need to also be running NSX 6.2 or higher. The assessment requires the deployment of the platform and the proxy virtual appliances. There are two profile sizes that you can deploy for both of them, depending on how large your environment the assessment is going to run on. You must select the same size profile for both of the virtual appliances when you deploy them. You can't use different profile sizes between the two different appliances. So if you deploy the platform and you do it with the medium profile size, you need to make sure that when you deploy the proxy virtual appliance next, that you're also going to be deploying it with that medium profile. They can't be different. They must be the same. You can see the compute and storage requirements for both of the appliances and the two profile sizes here on this slide. I won't bother to read and go through all the requirements for it. Just be aware of these resource requirements for these two virtual appliances based on either the medium or the large, depending on what they're using, and making sure before you even get started with the assessment and doing it that they have the compute resources and storage resources to actually uh, be able to handle these additional two VMs that are going into their environment. So confirm that with them before getting started. There are other requirements for the assessment as well, such as ensuring ports are open for communication. These ports are TCP ports 443, 22, and 5480, UDP ports 161 and 2055. And then, of course, you need an IP address for the platform and the proxy appliances to be able to IP those. Once you've educated yourself on the VNA and are ready to do your first assessment, Let's now talk about the steps to getting the VRNI installed and actually configured. First, you'll need to download the platform and proxy OVA files. You also need to download the temp assessment key from the Partner Central page that you see there. Then a technical resource from the partner or end customer will deploy the VRNI platform appliance using the downloaded OVA file. I'm not going to go over the actual installation process of the virtual appliances because all of our virtual appliances deploy in the same fashion. So anybody doing this is obviously familiar with deploying some of VMware's virtual appliances. During the initial deployment, you will select either the medium or large size deployment based on the size of their environment like I discussed previously. Once they're fully deployed, you're going to power them on the platform appliance and wait until it's fully up and running before moving to the next step. Once the platform appliance is fully up and running, using Google Chrome, you're going to connect to the VRNI IP address of it. Once you connect, you're going to see this screen. Then you will type into the empty text field the temp assessment key that you downloaded from Partner Central, and then click on the Activate button. You now see this screen where you need to generate a secret shared key to connect to the proxy appliance. 
Then you're going to click the Generate button to generate a shared secret key. And then you're going to click the Copy button in order to copy that pre-shared key that was generated to use to deploy the proxy appliance. As you see in the bottom center, it currently reflects the status of not yet detected in regards to the proxy appliance, which is correct for this point in time. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and deploy the proxy appliance. Make sure you select the same size configuration again, medium or large, as you did for the platform appliance. As you're now deploying the proxy appliance, it will ask you for that pre-shared secret key. Make sure you paste that pre-shared secret key that you copied from the platform interface that was in the last slide. Once it's been deployed, power it on and wait for it to come fully online. You should now see the status change to proxy detected, and then you're going to go ahead and click the finish button. Now that you've completed the initial installation of the platform and proxy appliances, now it's time to do some basic configurations. So now click Add Data Source button. We're now going to select the source type drop down menu, and this is where you're going to select VMware vCenter option from the drop down menu. You now need to fill in the appropriate information into each of the required text fields. First is the IP address or FQDN, fully qualified domain name, of your vCenter server. We do prefer that you use the FQDN instead of the IP address as a best practice, but you can use IP if you need to for some reason or another. Next, enter the username with administrative permissions to your vCenter server. Then you're going to enter the associated administrative password for that account. And then you're going to click validate button to make sure that you can actually authenticate with the entered credentials to the vCenter server. If it's successful, you will see the button with the white check mark in it to see that you see in this image here. And that will be confirmation that you successfully authenticated to the vCenter server. Continuing on, now we're going to select the appropriate virtual distributed switch or VDS in the environment that you want the appliance to be connected to. You can also give it a nickname or just use the same name if you want or just leave it blank. Either one, it's up to you. Then you're going to add any notes that you may want and finally click the submit button. Now that you've finished adding the vCenter server as a data source, you are complete with the basic configuration of the appliance. However, if you have more than one vCenter server that you want to connect to or connect to other environments, this is where you can go ahead and add those additional data sources if need be at this time. If not, go ahead and click the VM icon in the upper left-hand corner of the web interface. Clicking the VM icon brings you to the main dashboard in the vRealize Network Insight interface. This is the pre-assessment interface mode that I mentioned earlier in the presentation. Again, you can switch to the full product evaluation mode interface by clicking on the green button in the lower right-hand corner. At this time, we can now analyze the customer's environment. So we can click the Analyze button now. This picture shows you what the user interface looks like when it is in the full production mode of operation using the 60-day trial key. I just wanted to show you this for reference sake so you can see how you get to use the full capabilities of VRNI when in full production mode. You now see the analysis information in the dashboard related to the environment. Before running a report on this data, it's best practice to wait at least 24 hours before running a report to ensure that you get good and accurate data. Once you've waited that 24 hours minimum, click on the generate report button. So now let's go over the actual report that gets generated. So after you've clicked Generate the Report button, you're going to get a report that looks similar to this. This is a sample report that is available for download, and that's also on the Partner Central page for the Virtual Network Assessment as well. First, you will show the summary and key recommendations related information. Next, we provide some general information about vRealize Network Insight and NSX data center security, today's threats, and the solution, which is NSX and microsegmentation. Followed up by security assessment, showing microsegments by VLAN and VXLAN, your top talkers on the network, your top services on the network, and the amount of volume of internet traffic. Then we continue with the security assessment, providing more information related to ports being used and much more. And finally, the last part of the report is the next step section, where we make recommendations based off the data collected in the environment. 
So that completes my presentation today on the Virtual Network Assessment, or VNA. Again, the Virtual Network Assessment uses our vRealize Network Insight tool as a pre-sales tool to sell vRealize Network Insight. And it also helps to show how your network traffic is, whether it's the majority of east to west traffic or north to south traffic. It helps you plan and deploy micro-segmentation using NSX and using your distributed firewall rules and much more. So I want to thank you again for joining me today. As you see here, these are the links to my social media outlets where you can also find additional VMware information and other resources. Thank you again for joining me and have a wonderful day.